What's going on YouTube? It's James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Today I'm going to show you how to create your very first extension for Visual Studio Code. So if you guys have followed me or this channel for any amount of time, uh, you've probably seen tons of different videos on VS Code. Uh, you know that I talk a lot about extensions and the fact that, you know, there's so many extensions out there. If there's some sort of functionality that VS Code does not have built in, there's probably an extension out there that does, uh, that can do that, whatever that thing is for you. But if you come across a scenario where you don't have an extension that can do exactly what you want, you have the option and ability as a developer to go out and create your own. And it's actually a pretty cool process. And that's what we're going to work, walk through here today in this video. So I've got up a little bit of documentation here on building your first extension. The main th main thing that they talk about is they use a Yemen code generator to uh, scaffold out a beginner extension uh, set of files basically to get you started. So what this means is uh, you need to have installed on your machine yo, so npm install dash g yo, and that's gonna install the command line tools for Yemen, which is a scaffold uh, generator so you could run through that install and then on top of that you'll need to then install the specific code vs code uh, generator so you can run this by running npm install dash g to install it locally and then yo generator code now this this generator obviously is going to allow us to generate files to start working with vs code extension so that's what it's there for i'll give this a second to install and then we'll get started so that didn't take too long to install and now that we have it installed, we can go ahead and use it by saying yo, so uh, use one of the Yemen generators and tell it code generator. So yo code, this will go ahead and uh, walk us through a few steps to create uh, a VS Code extension. So notice that uh, there's two different ways at the top here. There's uh, VS Code, or excuse me, TypeScript and JavaScript to create your extension. I'm gonna use JavaScript. You're free to use TypeScript if you want. And there's also a few other options for a color theme, language support, code snippets, key maps, these are uh, specific types of extensions that I'll probably follow up on and do a video on later. At least the, at least the, uh, where is it? Extension pack, because I've done one of those myself. So, uh, but I'm going to start here with extension with JavaScript, press enter, and then we'll just call this testy test, because this doesn't need to be anything fancy. The extension uh, identifier will be the same. Uh, this is a test for the description. And then enable type checking JavaScript in the JS config. Sure, that sounds good. Initialize a Git repository. Yes, you're probably gonna wanna track this stuff in Git. And then uh, I use NPM instead of Yarn. Obviously, whichever way you roll is fine. You can use what you want. So this will take a few seconds to go ahead and install all the dependencies and then create a couple of files to get us started, which is pretty nice. So now with that folder created, I can open it up with code by typing in code testy test. To open that right up and let me close this other one and make this one big. So uh, a couple different files in here, obviously. The first one that you probably care about that you're probably most familiar with is the package.json file. Has general information about your your uh, extension, the, the name and then the display name could be different if you wanted it to be. The description for it, obviously. Your version, you'll obviously wanna update this every time you put out a new version to kind of coincide with the changes that you make. And a couple of things that we're talking about here in a second is the activation event and the uh, commands that you register here. Now, notice also that this says, uh, what is my main function or basically my main file that I'm gonna run? That's gonna be the extension JS. So you can open that one up. And inside of here is where you can actually start to write code for your extension. So it's got, it's got some boilerplate code in here. What we're really looking for is uh, one, there's this line here that prints out when your extension is activated. So it'll print out to the console when it's actually being activated. We'll talk about that more in a second. And then you've got the ability to register a command. So this is just kind of relatively an arbitrary name here that you choose, starts out as hello world. And then inside of this callback function is the code that gets run when this command gets called. So the cool thing about uh, the scaffolding tool is it creates uh, in your .vs code folder a uh, debug configuration here. You don't have to worry about this. You don't. You can look at it, you can play around with it if you want, but you don't have to. So with that debug configuration, I can go directly to my debug panel and I can run this and it will open up on my other monitor over there a new instance of VS Code, which is kind of in a test extension development mode and because of this, I have the ability in this one to run my extension. 
And if we look back at the package.json, for this hello world command, we defined it to have a title of hello world. And in the functionality in the code for the callback, all it does is basically pop up a message that does say hello world. So that's the, the show information message on the window object, which is on the VS code object. So inside of here, inside of my test one, I can do command palette, command shift P on uh, Mac and then control shift P on windows and then type in hello world. And we should see our hello world message pop up in the bottom right. So that's your hello world VS code extension. Now you can change the name of your uh, commands. So I could call this create boilerplate, which is what we're gonna do and say, the title is gonna be create web boiler plate. And so I've got that changed. Now the command that I actually register in code needs to match that. So this is gonna be create boiler plate as my command as well. But if I run this, I will have an error when I try to actually run the extension again. And it's now called create web boilerplate. Uh, it says create web boilerplate extension not found. And that's because in our package.json, this activation events, this tells VS Code when to actually uh, activate our extension. So extensions by default are not activated or loaded. They are quote unquote lazy loaded. So they're only activated when some certain condition is met. And before we were only loading it when we actually triggered the command. So if we wanted to follow that same thing, we can now say load it when when we activate, when we actually run this command and load the extension. So the first time you run it, it'll take a little bit longer than subsequent ones. So I'm gonna make this one a lot smaller so that we can see our console in the background here. I'm gonna close. So uh, watch, watch this console over here when we run. If we create web boilerplate, we'll see, congratulations, your extension testy test is now activated and then our message pops up here. So this is in fact activating this extension when we run this command. Now you can try out a bunch of different commands. You could also, or excuse me, activation events. You can also say star. And what this means is the our extension is gonna be activated regardless of any command. Any, any action that comes through, it's going to activate our extension. So this uh, goes ahead and registers and activates our extension before me even doing anything in here, but running this command still works that way. So depending on when you want your extension to be activated, uh, you can tweak these activation events to uh, do so accordingly. So now let's jump into our, our function. Let's write a piece of code. So what I wanna do is create a snippet that will create an index.html file and then also go ahead and populate it with some starter uh, HTML code. So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna copy this in. I'm gonna create a variable in here and just kind of wipe out everything we got. So I'm gonna create a variable in here uh, which is using ES6 template literals and it's just our HTML content. So this is the basic HTML string for an HTML5 boilerplate file. So we'll start off, we'll start off with that string. And then I want to I want to basically just write this file. So the way we do that is we work with the FS module in node and we'll need to require that. So bring that in. So const FS equals require FS. And then I'm also going to use the path. Notice I get some good IntelliSense here from VS Code on what packages I can require. So now that we have uh, those two packages imported, uh, I can start to uh, do a write file. So the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna use uh, fs.write file and I'm gonna do a path.join and I'm gonna say folder path, which is a variable I need to create in a second, and then index HTML. So what this is gonna do is it's going to uh, grab that folder path, it's gonna put that together with index.html and it's gonna give uh, a path to the, to the index HTML file that we're going to create. Inside of that, I'm going to add the HTML content and then it's gonna pass us, uh, it's gonna have a callback function that uh, if it has an error, we can do a console error of error. And instead of returning, we can actually uh, pop up a message to the user to say VS Code window show error message. So we wanna let them know something uh, something wrong happened and and we wanna say fail to create boilerplate HTML file. All right, and that's gonna be a return. So we'll return that one. Otherwise, 
in here. Otherwise, I can just say we created boilerplate and say show not error, show information. So just let the user know, hey, this actually worked. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually calculate this folder path. Now, this is a little tricky for me to, to figure out, so it took me a little bit, but I ended up uh, figuring out. I'm just going to copy this one in. You guys can uh, play around with this a bit later on if you're interested. Uh, but it gets the folder path from a variable called VS Code. It has a workspace option, which ha or variable, which has all the properties about this workspace. Inside of that, it has a list of workspace folders. We want to grab the first one, the zeroth index, grab the URI, convert it to a string, and then do a split to get the piece that we're actually looking for. Then that's what we're going to pass into this folder path with index.html to tell it where to create our file. So we've got that saved. Let's restart our extension. Let's open up the test VS Code here. And I've oh, noticed I open up a test folder here, so we're ready to go. And then uh, let's try create web boilerplate, and it creates that HTML file with that code in it. Now, the, the actual full project that I did for my first extension was I went ahead and did kind of the same thing, but also created an app.js and an app.css, and then linked to those, obviously, in the index HTML file. So uh, that, is, that is creating your very first VS Code extension. Now, I want to obviously let you know there's tons of other APIs that you uh, that are relevant here that you will have to look into and explore to figure out how to do things, but all this is JavaScript. It runs in nodes. You can use all of your node packages. You can install additional node packages if you need them. No worries. It should be all the kind of code that you're used to writing and should be pretty easy to get up and going with. So the last thing I want to touch on is the publishing process, and I will, I'll leave some of this to you guys to walk through. Uh, they've got a good... Uh, some good documentation on publishing extensions in here. Mostly it uses the VSCE uh, VS code extension, visual studio code extensions, a command line tool that helps you to package your extensions to then publish. So uh, with VSCE, you can, uh, you can do a VSCE package to package it and then upload that to the, uh, the store. So what I did, they actually have a, they have a publish command too that I never got to work. I don't know why. So if anyone has any ideas why mine wouldn't have worked, feel free to let me know. So I could go ahead and run VSCE package. And what that does is it will create in my files here, a, uh, a VSIX file. This is the actual file that you can upload to the store. So what I would do is come into the marketplace here and you can go to publish extensions and you'll see I've got three that are two, yeah, three total that are published. One is this web boilerplate. You can update your extension and then just drag and drop that file and it goes live in the store pretty quickly after that. So that is, uh, that's how you publish. So we walk through uh, installing the tools to get started with developing VS Code extensions, we talked about creating your first one. We talked about publishing and now it's really just up to you. You've got the tools to go out there and build some really cool stuff. I know I personally need to dive in a lot more to the, the code APIs that we have access to, but the, the, the things that you can do are basically limitless. You can get as creative as you want, and this is a great way to take kind of a need or something that you're missing in VS Code and go ahead and create it yourself. So I hope that you guys enjoy the video. I know I'm excited to be able to create my own Visual Studio Code extension. I'm curious, have you guys ever created one? If so, I would love to see in the comments what you've created. I'll check them out and maybe give them a shout out on the channel someday soon. So thank you guys for watching and I'll check you in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.